talk about the option if we became a district-owned transportation company. And so we put together this plan by surveying some other districts, trying to come up with um, a scenario. We just started. And um, the first one, if we hired 20 drivers, the ranges around us were 11 to 13,000. So if we just went in at 14,000, that's what it would cost us. It would come with FICA, retirement. does not have life insurance on there, but it would come with life insurance as well. <clears throat> if we purchased 20 buses, Mr. Henry, what were the age of these buses when we called? Um, 2007. 2007 to your buses. We purchased 20. That's what it would cost us. Fuel, we, we budgeted fuel dollar over a gallon right now, and that's the number of miles in the route. I think we took six miles to the gallon came up with that amount. Upkeep, some buses wouldn't have any, some would have significant amounts. We kind of budgeted that based on other districts' experiences and put that at 70,000. We'd hire a full-time mechanic. We would hire an extra maintenance person <coughs> or we would hire three of the drivers to be full-time. So that could, that could be a flexible option. And that person would do some of the minor maintenance, fueling, washing of the buses, um, and, the, and help out the mechanic. And so that could either be one additional person that we hire, or we believe that we could do three or four full-time drivers, change their salaries to full-time, and provide health insurance to those people. And then a director to oversee this whole system with total 733,963. That would be the budget. And right now we budget 760,000, so it's pretty close to what we're doing now. So that is a option that is out there. Another option a driver came and talked to me about that I would like to throw out to the association and if it's something they would like to consider know that you could present this proposal as well um, was and I'm sp I haven't spoke to the board about this but this driver came and visited is if we have 20 routes and we we issue them by bid but you guys get first option to bid a bid is awarded to you automatically first year so the first three-year bid automatically goes to you as the owner of the bus and that gives you three years to process this, figure this out, and it would be clearly spelled out that in three years it becomes a competitive sealed bid. I don't know if the board would go for that or not, but that's an option a driver presented to me, and I wanted to throw that out to you. Thursday, the 22nd, that um, the bus association has a proposal for the board. I, and I have linked, I, they don't have it yet, but I've linked to the board members the proposal that you presented for them to review prior to the meeting. And if you want to change, add, delete, present this, present the automatic renewal of the first year contract, you know, do you understand what I mean by that? We put it up for a three year bid but your first option to that bid for the route for the bus that you have. And then that gives you three years to, to work on that. That would be another option. And so I can leave it open to, you can present one, two, or three proposals to the board. It doesn't say, so that's up to you all. At the meeting Thursday night, mm -hmm. the association gets five people. It gets to speak, right? Correct. Three minutes per person. Correct. And you can do that during public comment time or right just before you do your proposal. I and mean, it makes sense to me that you would do it before your proposal, but if you want to change that around, just let me know. 
but we, we, we have allowed five spots for that. <coughs> have a print out of this that we can look at? Yeah, if you'll just stop by the office, we'll print it out. Uh, you might be able to hit print here and it'll be ready. <coughs> it will be wireless. Are you presenting this proposal to the board also? No, if it's something that your association would like them to consider, just let me know. And then if, when we do our bid process, we will look at it, but I don't have that on the agenda for this month. So is that, is that what your, uh, you know, what you showed us there, is that, is that something that, I mean, do you think the board is willing to accept that or? Yeah, and if we did that, that 150,000 for 20 buses, one thing that I would like to entertain is we get an appraiser in here and we buy your buses if you want them for sale for maybe 20% over market value or something if you will agree to sign on for one year of work somehow. Like that. <coughs> so that way your bus is off of your hands as an expense and then we won't purchase 20 buses that first year and then we might start a rotation. But that 150,000 that's in there, we believe we would keep that as a consistent budget line to revolve buying buses. Maybe one year we don't buy any buses and we build a bus barn, a metal building, you know, and we just keep that capital amount in our budget to keep the improvements going forward. But I just, something to mull over and think about. So what's, what's these drivers going to live on during the three months or four months from school? If they're just going to make four Yeah, if, they, if it's one of the full-time, they'd be full-time 12 month employees, but they're the others be all 20 would outside. be part-time jobs. Um, I thought you were going to cut them around. We would look at it, but the first year we would leave it, and then that would be spelled out in the contracts because it's not spelled out now. And all of that needs to be lined out exactly how that's going to happen. So what I would propose the first year, if I was in the association, is this 20 routes. And it will be a contract that will be issued similar to what we'll put out for bid. It will be a little bit different than what you have now because it will be a contract trying to get us in the efficiency range. And you'd have first option to accept it or not. Okay, but and some of the routes may be leveled out, but that might be something we do over time as well. Correct me if I'm wrong. I, yeah. I understand that that you had budgeted seven hundred and sixty five thousand. Right. But am I also correct in that you only paid us seven hundred and nine thousand? Right. Last year, yes. Last year. Well, that's going over what you paid us. Yeah. Are, you, are, are you willing to go over what you Well, I would hope this budget would come in just like, we always budget big. That's that fuel at three and a quarter. Hopefully it won't get to three and a quarter. So you always budget big and you hope to expand. And even if, you, even if you use that 764 number, that's only a third $30,000 savings. I mean, you're not right. talking about well, a lot of money in the big picture. The only difference is we would be investing 150000 in capital which would be something that the district would own that would go into the depreciation chart. Can the school purchase a bus that's more than 10 years old? I thought you guys couldn't. I'm pretty sure you guys can't buy one that's more than 10 years old. Well, we would probably then buy it for a trade-in and then trade it. We probably can't operate it, yeah. but we would still buy it, and then we would trade it in for a bus of 2007 or newer. Well, I've got a running bus that's over 10 years ago. Huh? I've a running bus that's over 10 years ago. You can run it. You can run it to 25, but you cannot purchase it. On so we'd have to buy it and then use it as a trade-in on a bus. Not a public school, private individual. Contractors have, can do differently. Yeah, public I think school. that that's correct. Can you, you can't buy them over 10 years ago. Public schools cannot. Well, probably, or I don't know, they do this. 
himself, but he's not. I bought a bus one time, and the guy thought he was selling me a bus that was over 10 years old. He never looked at the title, he only looked at the folder that had the wrong gear wrote on it. And when he sold it to me, they'd already paid him. He's shuffling the papers and he goes, this is the wrong gear model. You want to sell that bus back to me, do you? I said, no, I don't want to sell it back to you. He could get more money out of us because it was under 10 years old. He could have sold it for a higher price because it was then available to school districts. It wasn't available. I don't know if about that. It's been 10 years old. I know. It does happen. It bought them here that's over 10 years old, but the bus companies know, know that. They price their buses. Yeah, uh, on the uh, retirement, uh, it kind of always been uh, our idea that uh, we invested this money that uh, in our school buses and routes and uh, we would use that money when we got ready to retire to su you know, supplement our retirement mm -hmm. and uh, it appears with this option we no longer have that retirement uh, for us. Can you explain what, how this retirement is going to work? I yeah, mean, it's, uh non-teacher retirement. It's the same retirement that our aides have and our maintenance and our custodians. And I'd have to have Monica here to tell him how many years you have to be vested in it. But I think in five years you're vested and then you draw a certain amount. So like if you, you are your dependent. years you don't have any retirement right. coming to you. If you draw it out before you're vested? Is that yes. what you're saying? So you're going to have roughly five years to Do be you know vested, that, Mr. Right? Henry? I, I think the way that works um, <coughs> you still get the money that the school has put in on your behalf and that you have put on in on your behalf but it's it's not the same as um, uh, drawing drawing that pension check is, is the way the way PSRS works being vested is when you can draw your check but you still are entitled to the money put in and that's that 6.8 6.86 is comes out of your check, and then the school also puts in 6.86 percent. So the school matches. So it's just over 13 and a half percent for you. So that 6.8 would come out of the $14,000 salary. Is that what you're saying? And put back in. And because the school matches it as well. So it's actually over 13 percent that's being put in. And if you get to cash, if you cash that out the way I understand that he's saying, if you cash that out prior to the vested year, you get that amount of money. You just don't get a draw yearly. In other words, it'd be a cash settlement versus a monthly check. And I will tell you because I was in that position as a non-teacher uh, <coughs> uh, in the retirement plan. Uh, you pay income taxes on that money when you do draw it out all at one time. 25%. Yeah. And then, uh, Randy, what I would propose the first year would be that we, if you wanted to sell your bus, you could sell your bus and we'd have an appraiser come in. And if you chose to be an employee, we would give you the value. What I would propose, I haven't talked to the board about this again, I'd give the value of the bus plus 20%, whatever, if you signed on for a year as an employee. <coughs> and what about the one that want out? If you want out, we buy your bus. Is this right? After all, we've been vested not to get it back. Do you feel like it's right? I feel like when you make an investment in a business, there's always a risk. <coughs> so, do you feel okay with this? I do. I don't like it. It ain't right. This is a system the school started. Yeah. Time ago. And some of them, we've heard that. It's week. the right way to fix it now. And you can give back to all the people. Right so you, you have that proposal to present to the board Thursday night. But you think it's right? I think that it's fair for students, yes. I think that if we can save money to and you think so you can stand there and tell me it's right? I said I agree with it, yes. Well, but you're... I could say more, but I better not. Excuse me. 
you're not really saving that much money there. That's not a that's a that's a drop in the bucket in this in the big picture. You're, you've cut back on people you employ, and now you turn around and want to rehire them. It it don't make no sense. The, the picture that's different than this is we're not investing right now. We're investing this much money. We have a year's contract to show for it. We invest this. We would have 20 buses. The next year we might have a bus bar. The next year we might have um, cameras on the buses. So it gives us a chance to invest in, into our system. Who's been investing up to this point? Into our, into our system? The schools no, I'm, not, I'm asking who's been investing in the transportation system at this point? The contractors. Yes, I agree. That's what we seek is our investment. And the thing of it is, is you know, with us, you, there's a lot of that stuff you don't you don't actually need or have to have that you can and this was just a proposal that you guys asked us to put together, so that's what we did. So we put this together to, to try to get away from the bid idea because that was, we didn't like and this way you're just, it was just an employee. The other thing was, at one of those talks, somebody said, hey, when it's all said and done, the expenses side, because that's a, you know, you don't know what those expenses are going to be. Somebody yeah. said, you know, I just clear seven, and this way that's set, and so th that's, that's the reasoning for this, is trying to, trying to take away, to answer some of those questions this and take away some of that. Right, I understand. That's the Nobody purpose. Nobody cares. <coughs> that's the purpose of this proposal, that you put it together and you guys can look at it and decide what you want to do with it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 I thought the proposal, you said that we asked you for this proposal. I thought the proposal that you were going to give us was if you bought us out like you have in the past. If you bought our investment out, like the value of the investments instead of this proposal of just buying a bus. So like the proposal that you presented? Yes, that, that was the proposal I thought you were going to give us this morning uh, and that that <coughs> basically amounts to seven hundred and nine thousand dollars or somewhere in there you know if you bought us if you just bought us out the proposal that you're presenting to the board correct yeah yeah so if we do that I mean I guess that's another option if the board accepts that proposal buyout then as a district we'll decide whether we're going to be district owned or contracted. <coughs> that seemed like the fair and correct approach to this whole conflict, really, you know. Yeah. Well, it's consistent with the practices, the policy that's been practiced for 70 years so here when you, at Avon. I talked to Randy a little bit. When you do your presentation to the board, you have five people. Sequence this, these concerns and questions to them Thursday night. But if you want to discuss as an association, do, do you like this proposal as an idea or an add on or addition, or do you like the contract to automatically your first renew, first option to award contract if you want that as an option? All of those things, if you want to present any of that to the board Thursday. That is an option. I, the agenda item is just left open. The presentation from you all. Well, the association would have to meet and, and decide on that. But uh, just from what I'm hearing from our association, they're not going to accept this at all. You know, uh, they either want to be bought out. Are you still on the idea of having parents come to the highway? Because that ain't going to work. We, we have analyzed a few routes, and there will be zero changes to those routes. We have some dead, what are they called? Dead heads. Dead heads that we are to look at, at annually. And if that is a dead head that we can avoid, we will avoid it. But I'm anticipating that to maybe be five out of the whole district that might save couple hundred miles over the total of a year. 
and we worry we do that already to some degree with safety turnarounds and and inadequate turnarounds. It may be a dead end road, but have you analyzed the family? See what their problems are if they're working. All kinds of things that will be considered in that decision. The the policy in, in the past is concerning my route at least if there was a, cons a concern about a turnaround it was the obligation of the uh, landowner to supply or the right uh, and some of them work with great some of them can't make an adequate turnaround and choose to meet you elsewhere but we've had some landowners that have cleared out whole spaces and made nice places But right now we're struggling with a turnaround with our handicap bus, which is a whole lot smaller than your buses with a family. So well, if there's anything that you if the association meets that want you want me to know for the board meeting, just let me know. Visit with me and and just give us the heads up. If we came up with a solution where we still owned our rent, the school saved a lot of money, would that be something to consider? I believe that the, the decision has been made to follow policy and make the routes. That I, I, somebody came up with the idea to give us another time to make good on our investment. We still don't want some buses. So I would entertain that you entertain the option with the board. Can I have first renewal of this route? first contract awarded if I choose. And that was a that was a multiple year is what you're talking yeah. about, right? And that was an option one of the drivers came in and shared one day and I thought I'd present that to the whole group. Yes. And okay, now the board is all consistent that they want it bidded also. Yes. Last last meeting we had, yes. I haven't seen them for three weeks. Oh, it was unanimous with the board that they wanted to be to follow policy. Yeah, but it was unanimous with the board that they wanted to follow. We've really taken a vote. We've, we've discussed this. Okay. Are we talking about a policy that you have written, or are we talking about the policy that's been practiced? The written policy. Jan, I'll, I'll print this off and get it. Get you a copy so you can see. Up there or down here? Yeah, I'll, it'll have to print back there. I'll run up and, and get it. Would you make me one? Yes, ma'am. Don't you think the correct and easy way to do this would be buy off the ones that you're wanting to buy if they want to sell and everything, which I think some of them do, and then every year buy route back when we want to sell? Do you want to present that? That would be an option you could present. Because some of the guys want to sell out right now, and then you, you know, that would solve some of your problem. Mm -hmm. And then some of us want to stay, and then next year, one or two of us may want to sell out. We're not a young group of people, just maybe Clay. <laughs> 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 We're not going so to work forever. Someone like like Alvie sitting here, he has uh, owned his bus and route for probably about 40 or 50 years. A proposal like this, as far as he's concerned, and he's just completely out of the picture, right? I mean, he's not he's not going to drive. He's not going to be a, an employee. He just loses his his investment. Right? If they wanted to buy the bus, they could buy the bus. So all you're saying is you're going to offer to buy our buses and that's it. You realize how much money you've saved on us over the years? That matters. It does. It matters. You kind of owe it to us once in a while to treat us a little bit better. <coughs> You know, some of these families own two buses. Roger Sanders, well, the Turners, 
the Millers. Uh, they've got a lot of money invested in these buses. And again, it just doesn't seem like uh, your solution to save. I mean, I agree that I, I want to, I feel like <coughs> the school should spend money wisely and, uh, but there isn't such a thing as a fair, you know, being fair about this. I just, it's just kind of blows my mind, really. I mean, uh, I sold, I sold a route about five years ago to Clay for $35,000. He went and bought a different bus. I mean, he didn't even run the bus that I sold him. He went and parked the bus and bought another bus to run that route. Doran Coberly, you know, was president of the bank at the time, and we went, he went in and got a loan and borrowed $35,000 and then went and bought another bus. It's just not right. And, uh, you know, it seems like our community needs to, needs to stand for something to be fair and right, you know. That's, I, I just can't comprehend it, really. So uh, I guess you might say good people sometimes make bad decisions. decisions. They mess up, they hurt other people. Um, I mean, that don't mean they're bad people. Remember what you told me in 2014, September 2014? So I knew for a year nothing would change? You told me that too, in April. Yeah. And then when somebody the came to buy a bus for me and I knew that things would change, I said, I know that things are going to change and I can't recommend that you buy that. Yeah, well, this has been in the works for a long time. Long I just like, go ahead, bro. Mr. McDonald had been asking them questions at that meeting if he hadn't knew something was going on, why he was asking how much buses were, how much tires were. That was in April. And then I asked you after the meeting, why he was asking all this. I asked him if anything's going to change, and you said no. I, I went to Randy Spurlock, and he said no. <coughs> I can call bus company and All right, so we're on the agenda for Thursday. And five people, we'll have five people speak. I couldn't, how come they couldn't adopt a new policy? A new policy spelling out? That where we own our routes. That you guys are buying back where we want to sell. That that's all your problems in about five years. And you are welcome to present multiple things to the board. I follow a policy, they set policy. To me, the school is actually stealing our routes, is what this amounts to. If I was you, and I'd feel guilty over stealing our school bus routes. We bought those things. I understand that. Doran Coberly and Lois Short, they was on the school boards at one time. And on our bank notes, it has bus and bus route. They knew what they were doing. They knew what they were selling, buying. Well, I, I just hope you guys realize that if, from now on in the community, that's what you will be known as because that's what we will tell people. Yes. We spoke to a board yes, member who was on the board when that policy was put into effect, and he stated that that was never intended to include the bus routes. The bus routes were owned by the drivers. That policy was never intended to include that. Which is part of why there's state statute of contracts to state vendors can only be so long. <coughs> the board in 1958 can't be responsible for the board in 2015. 2002, when that policy went into effect. This was never intended to evaluate us. Seven. So you have, have the right way to go to leave us behind? I don't like it. No, I don't like it. 
you have a policy that shows that the school owns the routes? In 2007, the policy that we have about transportation, I believe your wife picked it up, doesn't specifically say the school owns the routes, but the Dusty Manual says the routes are the authority of the school district. So you own it. It's ours. You know, we could change an 80 mile route to a 40 mile route, or we could drop a route. We understand that. That, that, that does that not does, say you own it. That doesn't mean anything. That doesn't, yeah. I don't guess technically anyone owns it. Gainesville could vote in the whole southern half of the district, and we would just have to change routes. I mean, the authority of how the route is divided and de designed is the authority of the district to design the route. Nobody has ever challenged that. You realize that the board sets the routes. The idea is, since this policy, this policy has been in effect since there's been student transportation in Ava, Missouri, and it was adopted into the policy also when it was reorganized. Same same policy. I've talked to people that drove buses back and whenever in the world, telling me about how many engines they had to put in, and I've worked down at Salee Motor and think how many times they brought them in. Same policy has been in effect all this period of time, up until the last time it was implemented was one year ago. This policy has been practiced. What they done when they reorganized was when they gave out bus routes, they was obligated <coughs> to buy a new bus. A new bus. I'm assuming a new bus then was relative to the economy at the time, and a new bus today is what? Maybe eighty, ninety thousand dollars That's a pretty good investment. Obviously, nobody in their right mind is going to buy a bus that costs that much money for a contract that pays a third of that or whatever it paid. What was it? Twelve cents a mile, Alvy, when you was running? Mm -hmm. so. <coughs> so, how did you expect to get anyone to go buy a bus and perform this uh, task of hauling kids and all that goes with it for a one-year contract? It's, n it's not what happened. It was never the intent. It's never been the practice. The practice was when they got the contract and they obligated themselves to buy the bus, the contract was renewed year after year after year, became a possession of the person that it was given to. It became their possession. The school acknowledged this in the fact that they have also bought and sold those same routes. They have demonstrated that they acknowledge this, the district has acknowledged this, for some odd, what, 70 years and 50 some odd years since we've reorganized. And, that's and now this school. policy is firmly established in the community. Everybody knows it's published in the paper. All the people in the world acknowledge it around here that know about it. And uh, so how can you say that this policy is now something different because we wrote something on a piece of paper what you did not even follow after you wrote it on the piece of paper. You did not abide by the policy that you, that you wrote. You stayed with the policy that was in effect and has been in effect, which has provided the fact that it became a possession of the, of the person that <coughs> one from another from another to another. That's our contention. It became a possession. You acknowledged it in this district by buying and selling it yourself. And it is a proven fact then, by policy that has been practiced. What you write on a piece of paper is one thing. What you actually, in fact, practice is entirely something else, if you're going to proceed with something else. If, was, if, that was, if your policy that was rewritten in 07 or whenever you said, was in fact a policy that was followed, then we should have had this problem in 07, not now. Now you have continued on any number of years after you say you changed the policy, what the board members at that time said, no, it was not intended for that purpose. <coughs> the intent is very, very clear. 
no problem understanding it. Anyone in the world that can take a view at it can understand clearly what the intent was of this school district all the periods of time they have transported students to and from school. Our contention is we own it because you established a policy, you practiced a policy, and that policy has been in effect in spite of whatever you wrote on a piece of paper. And as you can tell, most of the people from this community that were at that meeting the other day feel the very same way. I mean, you guys are going to come out such, no matter what happens to us, you may take our buses, you may get this done. You guys are going to be the losers here in the end. You guys are going to be the losers. You guys are going to be the bad guys. You guys are going to be the thieves that stole our buses. Or the board right and that's, 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 that's you guys and everybody on that board. Now why, now why you guys would want to be that, be those people, I have no idea. In a small community like this where that where you'll never live that down, never, I, I, I just boggles my mind. Well, I was just going to say that you just don't realize there's parents out there that when they found out that they they pay taxes, 75, 80% of their taxes comes to this school, and you're going to take the bus away from them and they have to start bringing kids up to meet the bus, they're going to take their kids out of this school district and put them over in Ava Victory Academy. You're, you're so you're talking sure. about your numbers or kids are down, you're facing to lose a bunch more. You're going to do yourselves more harm than good. I don't anticipate routes changing significantly. It don't matter. It don't matter. You're, you're already saying that you've already got it out there that you're these turnarounds, and I've got a couple on mine. They've already said if, if, if they have to come and meet me, they're not going to do it. They're going to pull their kids out of school. Now, do you, I mean, that's just mine, and that ain't very many kids, and I probably don't mean nothing to the board or unions, but now there's 20 rounds here. There ain't none of this means anything to you. So, I mean, you're already talking about low numbers here. You want to make it worse? No decisions like that would be made without consulting with the family. So <coughs> we've looked at several routes. We think this might be a handful of locations. And it, it would be based on age appropriateness of the child. It would be based on turnaround spot need most of your guys roads connect through to another place i mean most routes are fluid <coughs> i have one road on my route that's yeah, right. well, from where i from where i understand on mine one of mine ends in ozark county i cannot go in ozark county we have district ozark county you can go to ozark county no you can go in i couldn't district. then why why would that change from before because i had a girl that lived in ozark county that went to thornfield and from where I turned around, it K was like, K we do. yeah, but no, look, she, she transferred to high school, but they would not let me go 300 yards down her driveway to pick her up because it was in Ozark County. They it's said no. It was in Thornfield District, right? <clears throat> well, yeah, but she had come to Ava to go to high school. That's true. They don't. And I could not go down you there you to pick her up. You can go to another district. You can go to another county, but not that that county's part of the district. Because there you go. I stop at Ozark County. That's a, I can't go no farther. I have to turn around and come back. <coughs> so Thursday night at six thirty. Can I ride up there on the board for a minute? Sure. Sure. I was asked to come up with something. You, you may have to pull your screen up. Markers. I don't know if all these guys before this, but this is just something I came up with. That's how much was on our contract salary from last year. So I divided it by 20, because there's 20 of us. And that came to 34, <coughs> 35, 462. That'd be our average salary. And the way I understood it, you guys just want to do away with four routes. <coughs> so I just kind of figured it up, a monthly payment for 27 months, for three years. You know, during school months, you know. So that came up to $1,300 for each route, 
just a monthly payment for three years. So for four routes, that would be $5,200 a year, or a month, next year. So for a year, next year, that'd be 47,283. Our average routes for that would be 141,000. That's almost $100,000 you'd save next year. <coughs> that makes more sense than anything I've seen in here. So it's 709 is the total expenses last year. Yeah. 35, 462 is, is the, the average, average salary paid. of us. And then 1313 is the monthly That'd be a monthly payment to the guys that you want to do with the routes. If they'd be for it. I divided this by 27. 27. You know, just for school months for three years. And that's what it came to. Okay. So for four routes per month, that's what the school would pay. That's what they'd pay a year. And that's what they'd save the first year. Okay. What happens after the three years? I'm assuming that the school would own those four routes. What about the rest of the routes? Well, I'm assuming if we'd done this, that we'd own our routes. And after three years, do we? We start this all over again? Where no, I'm saying we've done this for the school saved $100,000 next year, then say we own our routes and do with four of them and save almost $100,000. I don't know if people do forget monthly payment, but I think. Some people would at this point. You know, to me, $100,000 is a lot of money to still save in one year. Probably more than that 30000 proposed on what you come up with, right? Looks like to me everybody kind of wins in the situation because we get to own our routes, and plus the school saves money. I'm not saying all these guys are for this. This is just something I came up with that made sense to me. But my mind works different. <laughs> I think basically what you're going to find is we're, we're, we're not going to be for any scenario where we bid on them or where we are not considered the owners. I mean, that's, as, as, as I've been telling you all along, that, that you, know, you know, the only other option the only other option that, that, that you're going to have, we gave you there the other day. You know, I think I think about all of us are probably, you know, willing to go that route. But other than that, I don't think I don't think you're going to find that we're going to be willing to do any other option where we don't own them or, or where we have to bid on. Them. You know, if we bid on them, that says we we don't own them. We believe we do. So I mean, that just kind of. You know, to me, there's really not much much other point in discussing it past that. You know, if if you if you're going to continue with the hard line that that this policy has changed and that we you know we're going to have to bid on these things, I know me personally, I, I I'm just I won't do it. I won't do it under no scenario. There is no. You know, I can't absolutely speak for the rest of these guys, but from on my end, I will not do it. I refuse to do it. So as long as you keep coming up with that scenario, we're going to keep banging heads. I mean, that's just that's just just how it is. You know. As far as I'm concerned, I mean, I I think these guys pretty much feel the same way I do, but you know. As far as I'm concerned, for sure, I for sure feel that way. You know, it's it's to me this is it's just kind of a waste of breath to even be talking about this if we're not even going to discuss that option, or if the board has already made up their mind on that option. So Thursday night, if you could give it over to the people that are going to speak in order, so that I could have that ready, that'd be great. <coughs> Uh, it's going to be Larry Benson. Before you do that, actually what I would like to do, Randy, is I know you guys have 
wanted me to speak, but I would I would just prefer not to. I just I'm at a point where I would just rather not. I would I, the rest of you guys can speak or somebody can take my place if they want to. But you, I, you don't have to make that decision now. You can tell me that Thursday night when you walk in. I just want to have a list to give to the board president. I think I got on every bus this morning. We had a high school student that committed suicide last night. It was Miss Michaela Deal. Lacey Deal is our student representative on the board. It was her younger sister, um, Mike Huff's granddaughter. And so you guys transport kids. They had a fifth grade sibling, so it will affect multiple buildings. If you see any students that you have concerns about, just give us a holler and we will make sure that they get visited with at school. Clay, that was your route? Yeah. Do you need anything from us, let us know. Sweet little girl. 